Hi, welcome back. I'm Tanya from Tanya's Witchy Kitchen. Yeah, I got my bah humbug shirt on. I'm looking to see how much gray you can see in my hair. Maybe I should move back more. <laughs> I don't color my hair. Oh, it's too much time. Um, nothing against people who do. Like, that's awesome. Um, but, yeah, I just... I just don't, God, it looks like crap today. Um, anyway, <laughs> I get my genetics from my mom on my hair side, because otherwise I'd be bald or totally white by now. Um, so I lucked out, really. Yeah, just a few. Okay, anyways, <laughs> how are you doing? How's your day going? Mine could be better, but that's okay, right? You stay positive. You keep going. Um, I got my banner behind me. Can you see it? I thought maybe it would take away some of the the crap behind me. <laughs> maybe it doesn't. That's okay. But anyway, my video. We have a soaping video. Um, it was a weird one. It was a weird one. It was something I wanted to do, and I've been thinking about it. Um, and I should have known better on some of it. But you'll see what I mean when we get there. Um, yeah. It's interesting. It turned out. It turned out. It turned out. Okay. So <laughs> let's go check out the video for the Coco Bunga. And welcome to the Coco Bunga. Not the famous casino. No. No. That chunky mess is my lie solution. It is chunky because there's um, uh, coconut milk added to it. Yeah, my, my original idea for this, um, this bar was to make everything seize, right? Like coconut oil, cocoa powder, uh, the coconut milk, you know, um, cocoa butter, canola, castor, you know, all the C's. Um, but when I ran it, ran it through the lie calculator, I kind of looked at it for a little bit and I was like, I didn't like my acid ratio, my fatty acid ratios. So I did add some other things to it. Um, but I think I am going to try it just as a little bar, you know, a little test bar, you know, so. But anyway, I'm looking for emulsion. Um, actually, in the end, I wanted to, it didn't thicken up. So my, my fragrance oil right there, uh, which is mixed with clay is another concoction. I am once again, messing with my fragrance oils. I will show you. Um, so it was for those who are listening, it was a 54% sweet nectar and hibiscus from Brambleberry. It was 39% coconut fragrance oil from wholesale supplies and it was seven percent mango mango from brambleberry um i think it needs more of the coconut it's it's curing and it's coming through finally it must be a slow thing with that but um yeah I, I, a little more coconut but it smells i mean it's delightful it's what i would imagine a tropical beach would smell like with your flowers all you know, all around. I don't know. I've never been out of the United States, never been to a tropical beach, never been to the ocean. So this is my concoction of, um, it's a, oh, it's just a little water and cocoa powder, really. And that's what I am coloring this with. Um, yeah, it was the sea thing at the time. But, I mean, you can use cocoa butter to color. You know, it's a natural colorant. It will not smell like chocolate at the end, okay? Th those things do not come through when you use turmeric or, or this or... I'm not going to say anything about cayenne. I've never tried that one. But, you know, like cinnamon. They, they, the scent does not come through. It does not last through saponification, which is why people add um, fragrance oils or essential oils, okay? Now, I really want to this to chunk up. I really wanted it to get thick, which is why I keep messing with it. Um, and it didn't get chunky. It must have been one of the fragrance oils in there. 
But I just kept mixing and mixing and mixing, and I was hoping. And so anyway, I wanted this to look like a coconut. <laughs> that was my overall thought process here. And um, if I hadn't second-guessed myself, it would have been okay. But anyway, at the end, you'll see. Um, I'll leave you in suspense till we get there. But um, yeah, so I wanted the brown on the outside and then the, a white in the middle, you know, to kind of look like a, a coconut would if you just kind of split it in half like you could do watermelon slices, you know. Um, that was my thought process. My thought process always doesn't always work. And so um, I had my, um, my column mold and I was going to, yeah, this was the debating part, pour down the sides of it. But it's still really, I was hoping for thicker. Like my white thickened up because and the only thing different was the titanium dioxide in that and the cocoa powder. So I, I don't understand that at all, right? Um, it shouldn't have done that. But anyway, so this is my, I just started with a little bit on down the sides and I was trying to keep it off the bottom so I didn't have one big chunk of, you know, brown. Um, so then I think I just added some more. I just wanted it around the side of it, you know, around. Because it's brown on the coconut. Around. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a process. <laughs> oh, is it ever? Yeah. So, and I'm spinning my column, which after I thought about it, I was like, you know, this is not so, it's, 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 it would still burn my eyeballs if I, <laughs> it was just like one of those aha moments where I'm like, this is stupid. There's my titanium dioxide. I was hoping it cut to color it out more white. My fragrance oils, I think there was only one that was supposed to discolor to a tan. Um, and that should have been a good amount, but it could have been whiter. But it's me, you know. <sighs> I'm a walking soaping disaster. No, I don't do too bad. It's just sometimes, you know, your creativity is like a rubber band. It stretches so far and that's it. <laughs> and sometimes it's like you over, I, I um, extend the bounds of that rubber band a lot. But, so, yep, I poured the white on the bottom, tried to get it in there. And then I'm going around again with my spatula this time, not doing the dumb thing. Um, and just trying to coat the sides of my mold. And then trying to get my thick, which should not be thick. I don't know what happened to that. Um, batter, it didn't matter how much I mixed it really. It was so weird. Um, my thick white, which was supposed to be runny white, and my chocolate was supposed to be um, like cupcake. Um, yeah, total opposites. So I'm trying to get the white in there just to stay in the middle and not go down the sides of my mold. So that when I cut these bars, they will look like a coconut. Yeah, it's a good thought. It, it was a good thought, you know. Maybe next time I'll do it with just the coconut oil and a little bit of like mango or orange or something. But this was really good. I like, I like this sweet nectar and hibiscus. Um. It is sweet. It is a sweet and it's flowery and, you know, but if you're fast forwarding, you won't know what scent I used. Yeah. Uh, Cause I'm not going to put it in the descriptions. Some people just read the description for the recipe or the, or the fragrance oil or, and I like, I like when people tell me what fragrance oil they're using. Cause some, I mean, you read the description and it, then you get it and it's not what it smells like, you know? So it's, it's nice to have somebody, I, I read a lot of reviews, but it's nice to have some, a soaper say, I bought this one and it smells like this, this, and this, and it's delightful. It's like really good, you know, or it's brisk or it's whatever. So I just think with COVID, a lot of people, I don't think their noses are working the same. You know what I mean? It's, it's, I don't know. Maybe they are. Maybe they're better than before. Mm. I don't know. But this, it's, it smells, it smells good. I like it. 
Not at first. I, when I first pour, I sometimes I get sick from the fragrance oils. I don't use them at a high amount. It's like usually less than what they even state. Because I go by the amount of oils in my batch, not the amount of my batch. Because the water is going to evaporate out, right? So you need a steady constant. So I go by the oils, which a lot of people advise. Go by the amount of oils you use. Not by the batter amount. So, I, so as long as the manufacturer's instructions say I can use 5%, I will use like 5% of my oils. Um, some of them don't. Some of them will say 2%, which really sucks if you're putting it in soap. <laughs> it does. But anyway. So I just kept filling my mold. Um... Scraping it all out as in, you know, you could tell that there was extra water and stuff in here because it came a lot higher than my, um, than my, uh, pull through, my 70 soap. That's a delightful one too. Yeah. So I really don't know why that thickened up. Like, I have no idea. Maybe it was the coconut milk, all the sugars in it. Sugars will accelerate um, the process. Mm, that's probably just a simple, simple thing. Because there was a lot of coconut oil, or coconut milk in there. <laughs> and I'm trying to tap down my mold without, you know, having it come out the side. I'm just um, trying to get all my soap in the mold and not smeared on the side like it was. And here's where I second-guessed myself. Tap down the mold, and I'm worrying, and I'm worrying, and I take this stupid skewer, yep, and go around in the mold. I should have left it. I should have left it. Oh, yeah. Well, you learn, right? So here is the cut to the cocobunga. It was in the freezer. Oh, and I just let this sit on the counter. I put a little baby saran wrap on top of it just to keep, you know, stuff out of it. And um, I just let it sit. And it heat, it heated up. Like, through the mold, you could feel it heated up. But I did put this in the freezer because otherwise I wouldn't have gotten it out of this mold so quickly. Um, just going to cut the top off. And I'm not going to show you that piece because it's more wonky. <laughs> so, I mean, like, there's a lot to soaping. There's a lot of chemistry to soaping. And there's a lot of great books out there on soaping. I can't recommend any because I can't remember them. And I don't own any because I'm too cheap. I have bought some, um, I have bought books on like tincturing and infusions and stuff like that because there is a lot of math to that if you want a specific, specific, the ratio and all that stuff. But aren't those cute? Yeah, I just, I, it would have worked. It might, my, it would have worked if I would just left it alone. But it, they turned out cute anyway. It gives them a little bit of uniqueness between each one, right? They just, I just can't. I just cannot follow directions. I can if I'm putting something together, you know, like, but this, you know, soaping gives me, it overall gives me free reign to do what I want, you know, to an extent. Um, see? Look at that. He's He would have worked. He would have worked. If I would have left it alone, he would have worked. What was I thinking? Hmm? Yeah. And they smell really good. I, I, I know I've said that a few times, but at first I was panicking because it was so sweet and it was giving me a headache and... But it it does that. I mean, they do that. I usually open the window or something. My grandson would call that a butt. <laughs> he 
He's coming out today. I'm going to show him those. <laughs> Be like, either that or a ladybug, that one. I, I, could, I could tell him it's a ladybug. If there were spots on it, I could. it could be a ladybug. Absolutely. It looks like a leaf. And I think I show you how I fix. That one I put to the side has a hole in it, or a couple holes. And, um... Um, that was that one. Oh, yeah. But the one that's right there. I'm going to show you how I fix him. So this soap is so pliable now, but it's it's done saponifying. Okay, so it does not hurt my hands. It does not burn my hands. I could actually go shower with that sucker right now, um, and it would be fine. Here's the issue. It won't last long. Okay? There's so much water in there, it will not last very long. It'd be a very short bar of soap, you know? Like some of them last a month or more, depending on how big they are. Um, and that's what cure is. Cure is just getting the water out. Just getting the water out. And don't blow up my messages because you think that that's wrong. Because otherwise I would not be holding that soap. I've done that. I took my Christmas gingerbread one because I wanted to see, because it was a test soap <laughs> again. Um, I wanted to see what it was like. Was it too harsh? Was it too, um, cause it was all essential oils and, um, see, it's pliable. You just, you just fix it. And a lot of times I don't take the time to fix it. So don't, I'm just being really nice and showing you. Yeah, it looks pretty. Um, but yeah, I took my gingerbread one in the, in the shower. It, I mean, it lasted for a while, but, um, it wasn't cured, but it was delightful, let me tell you. That one was delightful. It's got molasses in it. Um, as a as a sugar. It really turned out nice. There might be a couple left. I could post a link below. Um there might be one or two left. I cannot remember. Of the of the they weren't Christmas soaps. They were winter soaps, but gingerbread's delightful. My kids love gingerbread cookies. My kids like weird stuff, okay? Like asparagus and Brussels sprouts. If you roast them in the oven, love them. Onions, mushrooms roasted in the oven, love them. Well, we like mushrooms on anything, but um, cabbage, you know, uh, depends on where it is. Beets roasted, oh my gosh, my kids can't get enough of roasted beets. Pickled beets, eh. Roasted, absolutely. And sauerkraut. Lots of sauerkraut. So, yeah, my kids are weird. Oh, I just, yeah, they were a little, uh, there was no soda ash because they were super hot and in the mold, but um, I just steamed them just to brighten them up. So, there's the Cocobanga. I hope you enjoyed this video and come back and see me again. Bye.